All right, hello everybody. This is gonna be a tutorial on how to get a properly signed SSL certificate from Let's Encrypt and stop getting these messages every time you try to join your HTTPS Synology website. So often when Synology users first start using certificates, they get the error that this certificate is self-signed and might be using a man in the middle attack to hijack your website. When in fact, it's really just self-signed because you are not a company. Synology has just gotten you a certificate. They have not validated it. They have self-signed it. This means that the certificate does what it is intended to do. It, ha it allows for encryption to occur on end to end, but it could also be spoofed. Basically, somebody could have a man in the middle attack and say, oh, actually we're going to use this certificate, which I already know the public and the private key to. That way they would be able to de-encrypt all of your data, just like the website is able to that you're hitting. So most websites will now give you a big error. And actually on Safari, you have to enter your password to enter a site with a self-signed certificate. This is because in 99% of cases for most general users, it would probably be somebody who is performing a man in the middle attack, stealing data. However, we are the 1% who are hosting our own website and want to use HTTPS. So here's how you get rid of those messages. This is a continuation of my first video about how to set up a DDNS server for your Synology DSM so that you can access it anywhere in the world with a secure connection. All right, so first off, we're just gonna go into control panel. It's actually really straightforward if you've already created a DDNS server. All right, so as we can see here, I've got the DDNS host name spacerex.synology.me. But if I were to go to that, it would be an unencrypted certificate, which we don't want to have. So once you've got this set up, we're just gonna go into home, security, and go to your certificates. And right now, you can see I've got two. But both of these are default self-signed certificates, which is not what we want. So we're going to add a new one. And it will even allow us to replace one. And this is the one I'm replacing. I want to replace the certificate for spacerex.synology.me, which is what I use to externally get into my NAS. Well, the virtual machine that's running on my NAS for tutorials so that I've got some anonymity. So we're going to click replace an existing certificate and go on. So this is where Synology is great because they make things so simple to do. I would recommend giving it a description and then choose get a certificate from Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is a free service that generates real SSL certificates so that you can host websites and use the SSL protocol without costing you any money. So this is where you've got to enter your domain name, which is whatever the person on the outside is going to be entering to get to your website. And here you've got to have a valid email and I don't have any alternative names. And now we're just going to go ahead and click apply. It's going to take a minute because right now it's actually communicating back to Let's Encrypt so that they agree that spacerex.synology.me is in fact assigned to me and that this is a valid certificate. It's basically all using massive, massive, massive prime numbers multiplied together. And that's actually how 90% of encryption works is basically just a process that's really easy to go one way or back the other way if you know both the keys, but nearly impossible to do if you don't know both the keys. And now it's gonna go ahead and restart our web server. And so as you can see here, we've actually gotten the error, this connection is not private. That is because the certificate that we used was not for 192.168.1.123. It instead was for spacerex.synology.me. And boom, there we go. And as you can see here, we have a secure certificate. That means that anybody who logs in here 
will be able to log in without having to go through the very sketchy process of saying, yes, I trust this unsigned certificate. So a couple of things that could have happened along the way that I've actually had problems with previously. To do. So first off, Let's Encrypt sometimes requires you to have the ports 80 and 443 open. This is how it validates them. Another thing that I found that I actually had problems with was my web server was actually having a problem by taking over this port. I've yet to find a way to go around using port 80 for this. So this could be an issue and you might have to go through a different certificate program if you're trying to web host and use Let's Encrypt. But for the vast majority of people, you can just use DSM and have a encrypted connection all the time. All right, and that's it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and subscribe, I guess, and have a good day. Bye.